can you relate to this right here? How frustrating is it welding on thin material with a stick welder? In today's video, we're gonna cover some tips on how to weld on thin material without this happening. But if this does happen, we're gonna talk about how to recover from it. For those of you who may not know, my name's Austin Ross. I've been a welder in general for 15 years, roughly. I pipeline welded for about eight years. Here on this channel, I share tips and tricks for welders. If these are videos that you're interested in, make sure and subscribe and ring that bell to get notified when I post a new video every Friday. All right, first things first, top off your coffee, kick back, and just enjoy the video. All right, today we're gonna be welding on some 14 gauge square tubing. 14 gauge is just a little thinner than 1 8 of an inch, so it's real thin material. A lot of handrails, farm stuff, just a lot of stuff is built out of this because it's lightweight and cheaper than heavier material but you don't really need heavier material for things like handrail and and so on so it's a very common thing for welders to build stuff out of and depending on where you're at in your welding career you need to know how to weld on thin material with stick because you may not have a mig yet or you know you're just starting out or you're just trying to tinker in your garage or whatever this this looks like so that's why i chose this material i will be welding with a tig 200 it is a multi-process machine it does TIG and stick. I'm gonna show you where I set it. I'm also gonna show you where I set my engine driven machine that's on the back of my truck, just to give you an idea of where to set your machine to start out. Interestingly enough, you may not believe it, depending on how often you watch my videos and how much you know about me, but I do not have a full grasp on the details of welding or like the science behind welding. I'm very much a boots on the ground type of person and I learn hands on and I learned by asking questions. I am not a textbook type of person. All that to say, I don't know the proper settings for certain material, size of rod, certain welding machine. I don't know the proper setting. I went to welding school my junior and senior year of high school, and we had, I don't know, a couple weeks of classroom time, our first couple weeks in welding school, and we learned all that. But I was, what, 16, 17 years old? Didn't retain half of that information, or if I did, it went I mean, I lost it the next day. So I literally just start welding with a machine. I just turn it on and I start welding with it. And then I go adjust it to make it work with what material I'm on. All right, so my number one tip is your fit up. Making sure your cuts are the right length to fit in whatever you're welding on. Making sure your miters or your angles are the right angle so you don't have a gap here or there. That's gonna help with welding on thin material. That's the proper way, you know, your proper planning, your, your proper engineering, your proper measuring, like the, that's the proper way is your prep, if you will, fit up slash prep. But we all know that it's not a perfect world. If you've been following me anytime at all, you know that I've made plenty of mistakes. It is common for us as humans to lack on our planning, because if you're anything like me, you are not so heavy on the planning side of things and you're just like a doer, like you just wanna do, you just wanna weld. So therefore you have to pay by learning how to weld big gaps or uh, kind of doing stuff the hard way, which can be a blessing in disguise, but all that to say it's not a perfect world. There's gonna be times where you have gaps and hopefully some of these tips help you weld these gaps on this thin material. Number two is the size of welding rod. So the number one size of welding rod that I recommend is a 332 in diameter. That's gonna be your best bet when welding on thin material. The next size up that will work is 1 8. It's just a little bit bigger. So 332 or 1 8. As far as the type of rod, this here is 6011. I think both of these are. 6011 is what I've got here, but you can get 6010, you can get 6013. You can even weld this with 332 7018. The type doesn't really matter when it comes to welding on this thin material. The type will really depend on what you're, you're welding, what projects you're building. Like if, like if you're building this thin material to hold something, uh, which chances are you're not gonna build much out of this right here that's, that's gonna need to hold something structurally that you would need to weld 7018 with. Chances are, if you need 7018, the material is gonna be thicker if that makes sense, but you can weld it with 7018 is all I, is all I wanted to say. All right, number three, how do you spell machine? Machine settings. Now let's fire up this machine and show you where I set it. Turn it on, TIG 200, I've got it set on stick. 
and it's on 83. Uh, just from my little experience with this machine, I'm going to go down here to about, oh, I don't know, we're going to try 50. That's literally just a guess. 50 is just a guess. I kind of feel like with that 332 6011, it might still be kind of warm because I was welding with 532 8010 on that 80 range. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll try it at 50. So with this SAE 300, where I would put this 332 is, is I would probably, I'll put it right here on my main or on the 120 range. And then over here, oh, I'd probably, if I had it right here on E, I'd probably put my coarse current or my fine current on, I don't know, 20, to be honest. That's where I would start it at. Okay, I'm gonna start out by just butting these two pieces up and we're gonna make what would be considered a butt weld right here. No bevels. There's no need to put bevels on something this thin unless you are like out here sometimes even on this thin material i might take my sanding pad and sand this down that way you don't have that sharp corner to weld on to but um, that's like the only time i would ever really put any bevels on something this thin is on the corners simply because i say that i guess if i was sometimes i'll put like a slight bevel but there's really no point on this thin material because that material is so thin this welding rod is going to penetrate just with the uh, welding rod itself it's just going to penetrate plenty you don't really need to put no bevels on the whole point in a bevel is to make sure you're getting full penetration so we got our 332 6011 and we got our butt up good and i'm going to put a tack here and then i'm going to put a tack cattywampus just to keep it from pulling. Not that I'm worried about this being straight for practice reasons, but that's just an old fabrication habit. Uh, yeah, I guess habit you would call it that I have. Just tacking cattywampus to keep things straight. All right, let's go ahead and tack it off. It's actually a slightly cold I was worried about it being too hot. It's slightly cold. So I'm actually gonna come over here and turn it up to about 55. Then I'm gonna go ahead and tack it on this other corner. Then I'm gonna roll it and tack it on the other corner or actually probably start welding on my next tack. So I rolled it over. I'm just gonna take off welding. So on this particular pass that you just seen, I know it wasn't like the closest up view, but with this particular setting, I had my 332-611 rod. What I felt was a pretty long arc length. Your arc length is just the length between the tip of your welding rod and your, your base metal, the metal you're welding on. It's the, this length right here. So I felt like it was pretty, pretty long. And the reason that I had to have it that long was because it's still slightly cold in my opinion so i could stand to turn it up a little bit but to compensate for for it being slightly cold i just make my arc length a little bit longer and it helps that puddle stay lit it helps that that welding rod stay lit and the motion i was doing was probably like a kind of like a circle i guess there, i really wasn't trying anything i was just kind of like a whip or a circle so like Literally like this and maybe like a, that's why I did like an oval. So it's like, but it's all one motion. It's really hard to teach. Um, that's why I encourage hood time all the time. But I'm also trying to lean into those of you that are, you know, really wanting to, to better your skills at home or, you know, don't, you know, just want to do it as a hobby or don't have the money to go to welding school or whatever. I really want to lean into that this year so so that's why i'm trying my best to describe what i mean by what motion but like there's really not a right or wrong way necessarily for your motion what i've learned is i i literally i do what makes sense for what i'm welding on and what my machine set on so i'm i'm the type of welder that adapts to whatever i'm dealt with versus 
going to my machine and adjusting my machine or adjusting my material. Um, and none of it's necessarily wrong, if that makes sense. But another motion or method, if you will, is just the drag method. No motion whatsoever. Especially if you're gonna be sanding your welds down on this thin of material, as long as your, your settings are right, like your, your temperature, your amps, or whatever, as long as you know you're getting plenty of penetration that you're, that you're binding, let's just pretend these are the two pieces of square tubing, and this is our joint right here when we're fixing to weld this. As long as you're, you know that you're burning these two together, like I said, if your heat's right and everything, as long as you're, you know that you're, you're melting into this base metal and this base metal to make sure you're joining them properly, then you can just drag it. So that's an option also whenever your fit is, is good. Don't be afraid to experiment with a different size of welding rod, adjust your amps, and just practice, practice, practice. Just try this, try that. It'll, it'll get better with, with more, more hood time, more hood time, come on. Okay, so let's say that you just turned on your weld machine. You, did, you didn't know where to set it because it's a new type of weld machine. And so you just started welding and this happens. Oh man, blew a hole. So now what are we gonna do to fix this hole? This is very devastating, it's frustrating. Number one, it means you're extremely too hot, but to fix it, turn your machine down about 20, about 20 degrees or 20 notches, just turn it way down for starters. And then my number one tip for whenever this happens, leave it alone. Go get a drink of coffee, go get a drink of water, go grab some lunch. That's the number one thing you can do to recover from a blown hole in your material is walk away. Do not keep welding on it, just walk away. If you keep welding on it right here, if you try to fill this gap, it's gonna take twice as long. By walking away, that takes time too, but it's gonna be way more enjoyable to weld up. So we're gonna let this cool off and then we're gonna come back and weld it. All right, walked away for a little bit. I'm gonna walk up to this, I can put my hand on it. It's still slightly warm, but I mean clearly. I can put my hand on it and it's not burning my hand. So I would say that's plenty, plenty cool. But keep in mind, whenever you go to welding on this, it's going to heat up real quick. So we might have to walk away again. Keep that in mind. That's a pretty big hole. Look at, it's a 332 rod. Look at all that uh, stuff we have to fill up. So <laughs> anyway, uh, you might have to walk away from it again. But what I'm gonna start by doing is just dragging it over here and dragging it over here. Drag it on this side drag it on this side. And I'm gonna stop welding. I'm gonna drag, stop, drag, stop. Instead of like trying to stay in it, you wanna touch the metal and let it cool off as much as possible. Fire this thing back up. And I am on 50 again, back over here at my TIG 200. All right, let me uh, set the mood here. All right, mood is set. We are going to start doing a little welling. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. We're kind of building up some metal over here and over here. I'm gonna let her cool off for a minute. Maybe even blow on her a little bit. Might even take a welding rod or a wire brush and knock that slag off. That's gonna help you too. All right, let's dim the lights again.
I know it's dark, but I'm just blowing on a little bit here. Depending on your experience level, you might go ahead and walk away again if this is you, but uh, you can see that we're just building up some more metal on each side. But even just not welding on it right now, whenever it's like to let the, the glow go away, like because you know it was red hot whenever we stopped welding, just letting that red go away helps more than you realize. So I'm turning the light back down. Go ahead and weld on her some more. See how it's still red? And the closer that you get in, like the closer it gets to joining, the more you can stay in it like I just did there. I was, I was able to stay in it and just kind of go in a circle. So now I just got that one little hole left. Obviously we're not worrying about looks at this point. This is all uh, practical over pretty here. We just don't want there to be a hole. So because whatever you're welding on, feeder, if it's a farm project, handrail, whatever that looks like, you just don't want uh, a hole there because once we get this all filled up, we can take a sanding pad, sand it down, and, and then uh, dab on it some more to fill up any pinholes. And really at this point, I can almost turn it up And you might need to, depending on your experience. All right, no more hole. Looks like a big old slug worm there, but but there's not a hole. All right, so now let's go ahead and do the drag method, so you can see what I mean by that. I'm going to turn. That was on 50. Uh, I kind of like I kind of liked it where I had it while whenever I was trying to burn that hole. Uh, I'm gonna go about 65. So I got my TIG 200 set on 65. Turn the lights down. Go ahead and do a little welling. I'm just dragging it. I just drug it and it was slightly warm. I'm gonna turn it down to 60 now. Then I'm gonna go ahead and roll this. Might turn it down and touch more. Then I'm gonna try like a little step method. I'm gonna turn it down to about 55. I'm gonna turn it on y'all so hopefully you can see this a little better. literally just doing a whipping method just back and forth one last thing when it comes to your your miters like if you have a gap do that same method that we did to fill that that big hole just drag on each side let it cool off drag on each side let it cool off drag and let cool drag and let cool is how you're going to fill gaps patience is what i would kind of recommend it's really hard whenever you're just starting out because you're trying to improve yourself you're trying to be efficient you're trying to you know get stuff done in a in a timely manner but the fact is is this kind of thing just takes time it's not a it's not a race um i remember back whenever i first started there was a lot of pressure on on trying to be trying to be fast you know but if if i could tell my 18 year old self something knowing what i know now i would tell him something along the lines of prep and and patience goes a long way and it's funny because i was told that back then but it, uh, I still felt the pressure. I don't know if he can get away from that pressure. Maybe that pressure is kind of a good thing. I think it kind of is. I think it's good for all of us. But that's, that's my recommendations when it comes to welding on thin material. You're going to run into this with fence, with old oil fill pipe. You're going to have gaps. So just utilize these methods with your stick welder. Just weld on it. Let it cool off. Skip around. You know, if you got a couple of big gaps, weld over here. 
let it cool off weld over here. You know, that way you're still getting something done, but you're not having to fight that one particular weld. So hope you all enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, check out my website, aeroswelding.com. You can find helpful tools list over there. You can find all kinds of resources that we've built and added on to the website over the years when it comes to pipelining, doing this type of work. Um, we've just got some, some helpful tools list. We've also got welding shirts, soapstone. We've got a couple of welding tools. And uh, of course, fun stuff also, you know, stickers that you may see here on my welding hood back here. One of my favorites that we just come up with last year is the eyeball it. I absolutely love it, eyeball it. Thank you all for joining me today. Hope your new year's off to a good start. And remember, learn something every day.